and welcome to another episode of Down to Disney, a monthly series where I pick a Disney animated movie, talk about its history and its impact on pop culture. This month's movie is Lilo and Stitch, released in 2002. A running theme with Down to Disney is that I found that a lot of Disney movies that are my favorite or the kind of the most beloved throughout Disney history were flops when they were released. Now Lilo and Stitch was not a box office flop, but a lot of the movies that came out in the early 2000s were. Treasure Planet, Emperor's New Groove, they both failed at the box office, which is why when Lilo and Stitch was made, they wanted to make it in the cheapest way possible. It's fitting that Lilo and Stitch is coming after my Dumbo episode, check it out if you haven't already, because Dumbo is in the same position that Lilo and Stitch was in in 2002. Dumbo came after two very expensive films and needed to be made cheaply for that reason. Lilo and Stitch came after two box office flops and needed to be made cheaply in order to keep the studio making things but not losing them money. The animators reverted back to the technique used in Dumbo, which is watercolor backgrounds, in order to make Lilo and Stitch an inexpensive movie. It was the first Disney movie to use watercolor backgrounds since Dumbo. But it wasn't just the backgrounds that differentiated Lilo and Stitch from previous Disney films. Movies like Tarzan and Treasure Planet use the deep canvas effect to create deep, rich environments, whereas Lilo and Stitch used minimal shading on the characters, and only about five shots in the whole movie used a multiplane camera effect. Everything was very simple, old-fashioned, and warm and homey. Do you ever feel that way when you watch it? I definitely do. My personal favorite thing about Lilo and Stitch is the obvious conscious effort Disney made to be true to Hawaiian culture. From the names, locations, and even the songs used in the movie, everything feels authentically Hawaiian. The name Lilo means generous one, but also can be interpreted to mean lost, making the song Hey Mele No Lilo mean lullaby of the lost. Nani, Lilo's sister, her name means beautiful. Disney also took their animation team to a famous hula school in Hawaii to capture Hawaiian dance to model the intro scenes off of. When Lilo is doing her hula in the beginning that is all directly modeled off of sequences that they saw at the hula school. Almost all of the landscapes shown in this movie are recognizable parts of Hawaii. This is especially noticeable during the beginning when Lilo is on her bike riding through town. Also famous Disney musician Alan Silvestri collaborated with Mark Ho'omalu on the score, so it was directly influenced by a Hawaiian composer. Also, while we're talking about the score, half of the soundtrack for Lilo and Stitch are just Elvis songs, which is extremely special in that it taught a new generation about Elvis. Elvis. I probably wouldn't know so many Elvis songs if it weren't for this movie. I was obsessed with that soundtrack. Now I know a lot about Elvis. There's a very famous deleted scene from Lilo and Stitch that also plays into the authenticity of Hawaiian culture. I truly wish it was kept in the film. It's a scene that features Lilo essentially making commentary about tourists. They play a prank on the tourists on the beach where they play a tsunami alarm and just make jokes about how tourists don't actually know anything about Hawaii. It's also pretty crazy to think about how much research and effort they did into making this movie really Hawaiian because originally it was supposed to be set in Kansas. What's super cool about Lilo and Stitch is that it has a way more involved history than I ever knew. Chris Sanders, one of the directors of the film, actually created the idea of Stitch in 1985. He created the character for a failed children's book pitch, but then eventually got to make it into a movie. Chris Sanders also provided the famous voice for Stitch. Originally in the film, Stitch was going to be an intergalactic gangster, with Jumba being a member of his gang who was left behind during a heist and then was going after him as revenge. The filmmakers found that Stitch was more sympathetic to viewers when he was thought of as younger, so they scrapped that idea and made him an experiment and Jumba his creator. Can you imagine Stitch as a mob boss? It's like, where's my money, Lilo? Where's my money? I'm thankful in another way that this movie was set in Hawaii because it inspired a lot of different aspects of the film that I think are really detailed touches. For example, all of the spaceships and a lot of the aliens are based off of marine animals. You notice like all these ships look like huge whales. Additionally, a few of the aliens are inspired by other Disney characters, including Tigger and Piglet. Thank goodness Lilo and Stitch was a commercial success. It had the biggest North American annual gross of a film since Tarzan, and it was one of only two Disney animated movies in the first decade of the 2000s that made all of its production money back in its first theatrical run. The only other movie to do this was Princess and the Frog. What I think Lilo and Stitch's legacy is, is Stitch himself. There are very few characters or movies in Disney history that become as popular as Stitch is. I think Disney set him up to be this way with their initial marketing for Lilo and Stitch. I personally remember seeing these commercials on TV, but they had Stitch interrupt other Disney movies. The previews, it just seemed like they were showing a clip for Beauty and the Beast, they're dancing in the ballroom, Stitch makes the chandelier fall on top of them. 
makes a tidal wave go over Ariel, steals Jasmine away from the magic carpet ride. Just hijinks, and people loved him even before the movie was released. Stitch has reached international fame. He's huge in Japan and even inspired his own anime spin-offs in Japan. He's just the biggest thing ever. People love Stitch. Have you ever been to Mickey and the Magical Map? When Stitch comes out on stage during that show, people lose their minds. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the movie Lilo and Stitch. As always, leave suggestions for what movie I should do next on Down to Disney. I've done a bunch of these by now, so be sure to check out the playlist of Down to Disney videos in the description box below. You can learn all kinds of other things about Disney movies like Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, Dumbo, Snow White. Check it out and I'll see you next month for another Down to Disney. Bye! This month's movie is Dumbo, released in 1941, Disney's fourth animated movie ever. The original story of Dumbo was written by Helen Apperson and it was illustrated by Harold Pearl.